Mike, you know what's one of my favorite things about board games? What? Is that a lot of games are set in very real places. That's true. And you can actually play these games in those places. We should go to those places and play those games. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murphy. Today we're talking about our top 10 games that we want to play in their location. On location at the there's spot. A, there's so many games just named after like a city. Right. Like you can go play London in London. Right. How good would that be to be yeah. on like the London Eye playing a board game on a Ferris wheel yeah, in indeed. London? Yeah, oh, indeed. So we're going to talk about 10 games that we really want to play on location. We're also saying these are at least somewhat feasible things. Or we're not going to be like some random star yeah. 100,000 light years away. We can't actually get there, at least not right now. Yeah. And so these are places we could potentially visit. Down in the comments, let us know what's a game you'd really want to play in location because you think it'd be really, really cool. Let's get to our list. Our number 10 is going to be Seven Wonders. And one thing that's nice about Seven Wonders is you can play this in potentially many different locations. Seven Wonders, Seven Wonders Duel, Seven Wonders Architects, take your pick. Uh, this is a game where you're building up seven of the wonders, like the pyramids or like the Hanging Gardens of Babylon or, or Colossus or something like that. And it would be really, really cool to play this game in those locations, at least the locations that still exist today, like the pyramids and stuff. Um, it would just be cool. I think it would be really cool to play games in those locations. Um, because it's just awesome. I think, especially something like the pyramids, right? Like, can you imagine sitting, sitting, probably not outside, because it'd probably be pretty hot and pretty dusty, but like, you're sitting there playing Seven Wonders Duel or Seven Wonders, and then the pyramids are there behind you. It's really, really cool. But in Seven Wonders, you are um, gathering resources and essentially building out these wonders that were take like bricks, stone, you know, different things like glass, papyrus. Seven Wonders Duel is a two player version of that, which is also really, really fun, where it has kind of one of those card pyramids, kind of like in Pyramid Solitaire. And so it's this really tactical game of trying to not reveal stuff for your opponents. It's just really, really good. I love Seven Wonders uh, Duel. Well, Seven Wonders Architect is probably my favorite. I like Seven Wonders Duel. I'm not a huge, huge fan of normal Seven Wonders, but nonetheless, the whole series has been great. Uh, it's been very well supported. People really like it. And it'd just be cool to play Seven Wonders in a spot with one of the Seven Wonders. Take your pick. Which one would you want to do the most? Number nine is kind of a category. It's any game that's based on a Disney or uh, Disneyland, Disney World ride. There are several games. There's like It's a Small World and Jungle Cruise. And I just can't help but picture we're on the Jungle Cruise, we're on the boat. In the middle, there's kind of a wide bench that looks like a table to me. And what if I'm on the Jungle Cruise and playing the Jungle Cruise at the same time? Oh, I just, the opportunity to go into like Disneyland and do that would be so cool. I would just, that would be a dream come true. I'm sure it's very not possible to happen, but maybe someday, why not? So I will take any Disney ride based game and hopefully play it on that ride. Talking Small World on Small World, Space Mountain on Space Mountain, Jungle Cruise on Jungle Cruise. Let's make it happen. Number eight would be to play Carcassonne in Carcassonne. I know people who have done this. Uh, people have taken pictures and put them on, D on BGG being like, I'm at Carcassonne, we're playing Carcassonne. Isn't this cool? Um, just because it's such a classic, right? Carcassonne is such a classic gateway game. It's been around for so long and it's just still around. People still love it. We still love it. Absolutely love Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a game where you're putting out tiles and you're building out kind of the Carcassonne area. You are putting out tiles that have uh, different, they have roads on them, they have parts of city and kind of grassland. And when you're putting a tile down to build out the board, everything has to make sense. So like city walls have to go next to city walls. You can't have like a road dead end into grass. The road has to continue. It's a really fun game. And you're trying to score points. When you put down a road, you can put a person on that road. And once that road's complete, which means it has a beginning and an end, you then get to score that road one point per road. Same with cities, except for cities, you get two points per tile in the city. It's just a classic. People love Carcassonne, so do we. And I would love to play it in the Carcassonne region because it would just be, it would just be cool to be like, wow, so immersed in the game and then playing the, the most thematic game ever, Carcassonne. It's not that thematic, but it's still really, really good. And it's such a classic, so gotta pick Carcassonne.
Number seven is World's Fair 1893. I love the idea of the World's Fair. I think it's super duper cool. I feel like they don't happen that often anymore. I know they kind of do, but I just can't help but think that a World's Fair back in the day really captured the world's attention. Uh, and it's kind of a fascinating thing. And to go to World's Fair 1893, it's in Chicago, first of all, I love Chicago, it's a great city. Second of all, you're really at the birthplace of a lot of inventing and innovation, uh, like major ones. Like one of the pavilions, kind of main areas of the fair was like electricity, because it was pretty new, <laughs> which is just like mind blowing to think about as I make something, uh, you know, full of using all these electrical devices. So uh, I think going around the World's Fair, being able to walk around, uh, see all these things, especially kind of from the perspective of like the future and to, re and to be able to like peek in and see the birth of, of kind of all of this innovation, industrialization and stuff, I think would be utterly fascinating. There's a big Ferris wheel as well, which doesn't hurt. I'd love to ride that. Uh, and I would just have to hopefully avoid the devil in the white city who's going around killing people. So if I can do that, all will be well. Um, I think it would be really cool to go to really any World's Fair, but World's Fair 1893 in particular just feels a little special. Number six would be to play baseball highlights 2045. I mean, we could play it at a ballpark, but I would specifically like to play it at the Baseball Hall of Fame. But realistically, any kind of baseball related thing, maybe like at Louisville Sluggers playing where they make the bats, I think that'd be cool. Really, I wanna play kind of sports game in general where their sports make sense. But we could play baseball highlights in San Francisco Giants Stadium or maybe the Baseball Hall of Fame. Baseball highlights is a game where you are simulating a baseball game, but in the future, because now there's robots and cyborgs and stuff, and you're playing out a card, and that card is going to simulate an inning of play. So an inning of play, which is gonna be you defending um, the offense your other your opponent is threatening and then threatening your own offense and then they play a card that then deals with the offense that you're threatening and then threaten their own offense and you kind of go in this back and forth back and forth playing cards like that in a six uh, six inning game so you're playing out six cards and then you're gonna uh, uh, hire some people from free agency, really cool, nice free agents that are gonna go on top of your deck. You draw out six more cards, including that new card you got, and then you're gonna play another round. You're playing these kind of short little baseball games like that. But the nice thing about the game, um, one of the nice things about the games is that whenever you get a new player, you take one of your other players and you send them down to the minors. So you have a 15 card deck and your deck always stays 15 cards throughout the entire game. It never ever gets bigger. So throughout the game, you just get cooler and cooler and cooler and cooler, but you don't have to wait for those cards to come around. It's just so much fun. It's got such cool art where you're like, oh, that's very, very clearly like Tim Lincecum or Clayton Kershaw or this person or that person. They just have a slightly different name. It's just really, really cool. I love it. I love all the throw shout outs to baseball and I would love to play it at a baseball park, but specifically the Baseball Hall of Fame. As a fan of performing in theater, in fact, I studied theater in college, how can I not play Shakespeare with Shakespeare in the Old Globe? I mean, it, it, I would be too distracted watching a show, of course, to play a game, but it'd be cool. It'd be cool to go to the Old Globe, sit in the middle of the stage and play a game of Shakespeare, whether it's today or back in the past. I think that'd be ultimately cool. Uh, I would love to, uh, I recently saw a show at the the old Globe Theater, the you know it's a recreation of it, of course, in London, and it was so amazing. It was so incredibly in that place, and that's all I was thinking about. Was just like, it's be a pretty cool setting. <laughs> it'd be pretty sweet. You're under the you know the open air and stuff. I think it'd just be super fun. And if Shakespeare happened or Shakespeare's ghost happened to walk along and be like, what's this? I'll be like, hey buddy, just want you to know we're still into it. We're still into you all these years later. That'd be just extra cool. Number four is gonna be Iguazu. I would love to play Iguazu at Iguazu, which is a humongous waterfall. In Iguazu, the game, you are also at a waterfall, except for the, the game is set in this kind of interesting fantasy world where you, um, there's some kind of, the theme is like that there's some kind of enemy coming and trying to steal all of like your gems, essentially, like the kind of the wealth of your people. And so you are then going to hide them behind the waterfall, Iguazu. And so, you are playing out these cards 
And the theme is you are like swinging. You're like these kind of, kind of like, they almost look like kind of like Avatar, like the movie Avatar. And you're kind of swinging out and placing these gems behind the waterfall and then swinging back. And how you get behind the waterfall is there's this big like water lizard thing that's like walking across the top of the waterfall and blocking the water. But throughout the game, it's going to be continually walking. So different parts of the waterfall are then gonna get blocked off again by water. And essentially it's, it's area majority where in each column behind this waterfall, you want more of your gems than your opponent's gems. It's this really weird theme, honestly, and in a really cool production that's a little bit fiddly, but it does make up for it by just being really cool. Um, it's an interesting game and it would just be cool to play Really any game by a giant waterfall would be pretty cool, but it'd be really cool to play Iguazu specifically at that waterfall to be like, wow, this is cool, <laughs> you know? And it would just be, it's just a cool theme. It's a cool theme in a cool place. I would like to play it there. Number three is Castell. The uh, art of giant human periods, the pyramids, the Castellers, is a real thing in Spain that we could go see. So like this one is like, we could make this happen. I would love to play Castell and then go watch like a performance of seeing these giant human pyramids and how they stack up, what the strategy is for that. I've seen like a couple of videos and it just looks like the most barely contained chaos of all time. I think it would be so neat to play that game and see it in real life in one big day and then find a troop of them and be like, you know, there's a game about you, right? Like, this is cool. Like, is this at all right? Do y'all train in similar ways you train in base and mix? Uh, they'll be like, no, uh, <laughs> I think it'd be super duper fun. So Castell, really any, any, uh, any sort of excuse I need to go to Spain, first of all, and then to watch a performance like that, I'll take it. Number two is gonna be Viticulture Tuscany in Tuscany. Um, viticulture itself is not necessarily played anywhere specific, but Tuscany, we can go to the Tuscany region of uh, Italy and play Viticulture there. And I think that'd be really, really cool. Um, I, I love Viticulture, it's my personal favorite game. I love the Tuscany expansion. I would also love to play like Viticulture at like a winery or like a vineyard or something like that. That'd be really cool. Or like a really cool, really beautiful like wine cellar, I think it would be awesome. But Viticulture is a game where you are running a vineyard and you are uh, having workers. You're sending out your workers to do different things. You can um, buy grape cards. You can plant those grapes into your fields. You can harvest those grapes, squish those grapes into juice, and then turn that juice into sweet, delicious wine. And then you sell that wine to fulfill wine orders. I really like Viticulture because I like how linear it is. It's nice and easy to teach because you're like, hey, you need... You need to make wine, right? Well, you need to make wine out of grapes. Okay, you can go here to get grape cards, but then what do you have to do? You have to plant them. You can go here to plant them. You need then to harvest them. It's got a very linear way of teaching the game, and I feel like it's very intuitive with what you're doing, and I just love it. I absolutely adore viticulture, and I would love to play viticulture Tuscany in Tuscany or in a wine cellar or in a beautiful vineyard, really anywhere. Anywhere wine-related, I think would be really, really, really cool to play viticulture in, and so I want to do it. Number one is Terraforming Mars. Don't at me. We're gonna get there before long, all right? I wanna go and take a peek into the process. I just wanna go to Mars, look around, play Terraforming Mars, see if I get inspired to do any ideas about can we slam an asteroid into the planet, please? Uh, and then I'll probably be quickly escorted back home. But I think it'd be hilarious <laughs> to just go on this uh, galactic travel uh, you know, across part of our solar system. And just like, the only thing I got is a spacesuit and like a game. And I'm like, I'm set. Good to go right here. It's all I need. That's all any board gamer needs, right? Uh, and I think it'd be a good ad because it brings culture to the planet. And uh, that's all I need. So Terraforming Mars, our number one, I just want to go to Mars someday. Why not? Why not us? I mean, it's a long travel and I have kids and stuff, but why not if we don't worry about those reasons? All right, now listen, we put Terraforming Mars on there because we're gonna go, not we won't be going, no. but people will be going there real soon. In our soon. lifetimes, hopefully. So we're like, it's close right? enough. We could send it's up a game of Terraforming enough. Mars, right? I think so. It's yeah. at least Aries expedition, not, not that heavy. No, no, it's not you that know? bad at all. But no, that's our top 10 games we wanna play on location. Let us know down in the comments below a game you'd really like to play in location. You know what, and go for it. Wherever, you can play in fantasy land. Get as fantastical as you want, travel through time, I don't care. I don't care, whatever. Um, so that's gonna be it for us. My name is Nick Murphy. I'm Mike. We are the Brothers Murphy, we'll see you later, everybody. Bye.